Welcome to MI Radio's Myanmar Today. I'm Melody, and here are today's reports. UEC to closely observe possible spread of COVID-19 for general election. Less rain brings worries to farmers. Low-cost housing market revives again in Yangon's real estate. Inland water transportation affected by COVID-19. Before we get to the reports, let's take a look at the featured local news for today. Director General Wu Aumien from the Strategic Studies and Training Department of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs on Thursday signed the Book of Condolences at the Indian Embassy in Yangon for the demise of former Indian President Sri Pranab Mukherjee, the 13th President of India who took office from 2012 to 2017, died on Monday at the age of 84. A volunteer medical team, including doctors and nurses to combat COVID-19 disease in Sitwe, Palto, and Ma'am townships of Rakhine State, arrived in Sitwe township by a special flight of Myanmar National Airlines on Thursday. They were welcomed by head of Rakhine State Public Health and Medical Services Department, Dr. Sai Wen Zohline, and the relevant officials at the airport. The health workers group included one assistant doctor, two assistant doctors, and four nurses. Terumo Singapore Private Training Establishment Yangon Branch officially donated five medical infusion pumps worth 5,000 U.S. dollars to the Ministry of Health and Sports on Thursday. At the donation ceremony held at the Department of Medical Research in Yangon, Director General of Department of Medical Research Dr. Zhao Dantun delivered speeches before the company sales and marketing manager Dr. Nei Miet Tut explained the reason of the donation. And I believe it's time now for a first report. As Myanmar is set to hold general election in 2020 amid the ongoing COVID-19, the Union Election Commission stated that it is working closely with the Ministry of Health and Sports for better preparation. However, if the domestic infection is increasing, UEC will announce any big change on election. Willison has the full report. Myanmar is one of the countries among many other countries which is set to hold general election in the year 2020 amid the ongoing COVID-19 crisis. The Union Election Commission is working closely with the Ministry of Health and Sports in observing the resurgence of COVID-19 infection in Myanmar. Although there was quite a long time when there was no domestic transmission, by the end of August, once again, the domestic transmission had spread in different parts of Myanmar. Therefore, as the country is set to cast votes on 8th of November, the resurgence of COVID-19 has become the main challenge for further progress. The Union Election Commission, which held a press conference on 2nd of August at its head office in Nebido, stated that the commission will announce any major changes in the general election in October. Umiyanai, a member of the Union Election Commission, said, <laughs> We closely work together with the Ministry of Health and Sports very frequently. However, for the best outcomes in this general election, where the voters will be able to cast their votes properly without any fear of the infection, we have taken the example of other countries which held the general election during the crisis like this, such as Singapore and the Republic of Korea. First of all, we have increased the number of voting places to make the process compatible with with COVID-19 production guidelines. Initially, we arranged for the voting places around 40,000, and now we have increased the numbers about 1,000 new places. At the same time, we are also collaborating with the state-owned media platforms where we broadcast by illustration on how to cast the vote during this pandemic and keep social distancing. We are preparing all the necessary equipment such as hand wash basins. We have the volunteers, voters, and those who observe the voting, and we have to make arrangements for this huge number of people. Therefore, we are closely collaborating with the Ministry of Health and Sports. 
The preparation is not only for voting day, which is on 8th of November, but it also includes how the candidates can launch their political campaigns, whether it may be door-to-door campaign, campaign in the hall or in the field or while using the vehicles. All this will be informed to the related people soon according to the statement released by UEC. Speaking further on if the general election will go well or not as the domestic transmission of the virus has once again increased, Umine also said, We will continue to observe the situation to the month of October and decide what we should do next. We will announce the plan in October if we are to postpone the general election or not. The General Election Commission has already released all the federal representative candidates. There are 1,934 candidates who will compete for Pidu Lotto, 976 for Amuda Lotto, 3,847 for state and regional Lotto, 212 candidates for Ethnic Affairs Minister posts, which make a total of 6,969 candidates for 2020 general election, which were all approved by UEC. That's the report on UEC to closely observe possible spread of COVID-19 for general election. Due to late and less rainfall in this year, many of the farmers worry that their harvest of the crops may not be productive and face the loss. However, for now, the farmers are dependent on the water from the dam, but the dam may not provide water for long if the rainfall is less. As the time of rice bearings is coming, the fields need more water than usual time. Willison has the full report from Nibidaw. The year 2020 has been a tough year for the people around the world with the outbreak of COVID-19 and at the same time worsening the global economy as a whole. But for the farmers here in Myanmar, it is not just the outbreak of COVID-19. Less rainfall in this year also another rough challenge for them. As the farmers are depending on the amount of rainfall for their cultivation, if the rainfall doesn't reach the expected number, then it is worrisome for the farmer in general. For the year 2020, as the monsoon has set in late and less rainfall, most of the farmers were not able to cultivate their farming on time, which means it may probably affect the harvest in general. Uti Min is one of the farmers who is the resident of the Biegong village of Zibutiri Township, spoke to my radio and said, uh, Due to bad weather and less rainfall in this year, I had to do the cultivation in a hurry. As the rainfall was less and late, I had to do the cultivation on my own. But I have franchised the field with a company where, according to the contract, the seed to be cultivated is provided by the company. So I cultivate what I'm given, maintain the field, which is about three acres. When the time comes from the harvest, the company will come and do the harvest on their own. I will get the money for rice harvest from my three acres fields. However, I'm afraid that this year crops may not yield as much as it used to be due to less and late rainfall where the cultivation was obviously late as well. Many of the farmers in this village have signed a contract with the company where the company repays the farmers in cash depending on the size of the field they own. It is said that the farmers will usually get about 800,000 yard for an acre, but the company will only provide the seed to cultivate. The farmers have to cultivate and maintain the field for better harvest as the payment also depends on how many baskets of rice an acre can produce. Dajin Winka is another farmer who also has about seven acres of fields which are all contracted to the company and she spoke to Amar Radio on the benefits of contracted rice farming for the farmers and she said Contract farming is quite beneficial to the farmers like us because we are giving the petty seeds for free. We don't have to manage for that by ourselves. At the same time, the company will do the harvest part, which means all harvest-related tax will be done by the company. We also get the money just for seeding as it also takes a lot of labor work. In the harvest time, we don't have to clean and dry the rice by ourselves. 
As rainfall in this year cannot give enough water to the farmers, the farmers have to depend on alternative water source for their agriculture means. For now, they are getting the water from small dam, but this dam will not be able to provide water for long as it is also very much dependent on the amount of rainfall. Less rainfalls mean less water to the store in the dam. For now, the water is being collected at night and is released to the farms in daytime. As this is the time the rice are about to have its bearings, the rice need more water than the usual time. But due to less water, the farmer is quite worried for less productive harvest for this year. That's the report on less rain brings worries to farmers. According to the Real Estate Services Agencies, the real estate market in Dago Milde Township is in good condition. The buying and selling as well as rental are thriving again at the present time. In Dago Milde Seikan Township, there are the projects by the government and other private projects, which attract the people's interest to the low-cost housing of real estate market within this township. At the present market of Yangon's real estate, the affordable housing and low-cost housing developed by the government are highly interested for rental and buying, according to the real estate services from the Gomude Seikan Township. The market of buying and selling is being alive at the time being in the Gomude Seikan Township and other Gomude townships. There are also rental and sale of the land within these townships, and even the land worth of over 100 million jets are called for buying and selling. Concerning the current real estate market, Domi Dinkai, chairperson for the community second township of Myanmaria Property Development Association, said. <laughs> Just before the outbreak of COVID-19, the real estate market in our Tegumyudit Seigan Township was cooled down. Very few deals occurred. Now the market has been returning to the normal status for two months. Previously, only the small land was on the market. Since the market situation is normal now, the land worth of hundreds of millions of juts beside the main roads, such as Bagu River Road, Tanwen Road, Yedana Road, Shueli Road are on the market again. The ceiling is normal as well as the rental market is in good status. In 2019, the selling and buying were not that good and the related services are also not going well. In 2020, the first quarter of the year faced with difficulties when the COVID-19 outbreak occurs. But now, the market returns to normality for about two months. The real estate agency said that the reason of the real estate market thriving more in the Gomude Seigan Township than in South Dagon and North Dagon Townships is that the government's projects and other projects are being developed in the Gomude Seigan Township. So the interest is rising and the investors and people who will actually live buying the housing there. For the rental market, the market is going well in the Gonsaigan Industrial Zone, where the investors rent the acres of land to do businesses. Moreover, the apartments of Yuzana Garden City and the affordable and low-cost housing by the government are also highly interested by the people, and the buying and selling and rental market of these houses are in good condition. It was said by Meg Kim Yenu, owner of Semi Moria Estate Service Agency from Yuzana Garden City. The selling and buying of housing in Yusna Garden City are seem to be in good condition. Every month, most of the real estate service agencies, including our agency, can work for 40 to 50 apartment sale. The apartments here are good enough to live for a family with five members. The width is 24 feet into 26 feet. Two bedrooms and one religious room are included. The price is fair so that people are more interested in it. The Gonsaiken has developed more than before. There are also huge projects around the surrounding. The present market of July and August is even better than that of April. The apartment prices rise about 1.5 million jets. Both the ground level and higher stories are interested by the people rather than the apartments from other townships such as Tinganjong or Tangita. 
the land selling and buying also reached the better situation after June. After the confirmation of two huge projects here, the market thrives again. The prices of land also increase. The Real Estate Services Agency predicts that the real estate market in Dagom this second is seen to be in good condition in the future. The market revised starting from the beginning of August and land and housing ranging from tens of millions of jets to hundreds of millions of jets are going well for buying and selling within this township. That's the report on low-cost housing market revives again in Yangon's real estate. Let's move on to the last report for today. Inland water freight transportation, which has been one of the main freight transportation for some deltas and regions, faces some difficulties because of the better road transportation and COVID-19 outbreak. As a consequence, both of boat owners and steamers have to face financial problems at present. Inland water transportation is one of the freight transportation ways in Myanmar, and it is a common way of transportation to those regions and states where it cannot be easily reached by cars. Water transportation has been used as a way of economy trading for not only local freight, but also foreign freight over time. Utan Xinwu, staff officer from Inland Water Transport, Mandalay Region, spoke to Emma Radio about common types of boat and numbers in Mandalay. <laughs> There are 46 freight transport boats, 51 passenger transport boats, 123 tug boats, 4 sand carrying vessel boats, 1 machine boat, 45 free machine boat, 68 free machine freight boats, and 247 boats which has over 20 horsepower. There are totally 585 licensed boats in Mandalay without below 20 horsepower. Nevertheless, inland water transportation faces some difficulties in raining season due to rising of water levels and possibilities of storm. As a result, there is no much passenger and freight to transport. Moreover, vessel owners and drivers in water transportation sector have to face another endangerment called COVID-19. Go Kai, who is a streamer, said, we have financial difficulties in this COVID-19 period. As there is no much freight to transport, our books owner gives their salaries even this period. But our salaries can completely solve our livelihood difficulties. Some people have lost their jobs and returned to their native villages as they cannot afford to live here. I really want to help them, but my financial condition is not good enough to help them. What I am lucky is that I haven't lost my job till now. As the market for carrying both passengers and freight in one boat is flow, the respective ministry has started to implement passenger-only and freight-only transportation system. Gobanya, who is a boat owner, said about the challenges facing in the inland. We don't have the fixed track or destination to transport the freight. I usually transport to Bamo, Kata, Kali, and the city along the bank of Chindren River. During this year, the freight which we have to deliver have been decreasing as there are some difficulties in transportation. The small size of freight is just for break even in transportation costs and tax. Only the large freight is possible to get profit from freight transport. For us, we don't get many profits like before the years ago as we couldn't transport many freights. As the freight are rare and the roads are getting better, we only have to transport the raw materials such as construction ones. And he also answered about his anticipation upon government's law and reduction of restrictions and taxes. <laughs> Not 
I have suspended the running of freight transport for two months due to the weather and COVID-19. We have heard that loan programs are provided by the government during pandemic, but we didn't have a chance to get that. Therefore, the waterway freight transport should be considered if the government will provide the loan programs next time. We also expect the government to reduce the restrictions and taxes for license as we have to suspend our operations for four or five months during this period. According to the figure of Ministry of Transportation, inland water transportation has been incorporated with seven departments and there are five passengers and freight transportation sub-departments. That's the report on inland water transportation affected by COVID-19. Now we move on to international news. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres on Thursday urged governments to incorporate meaningful climate action in all aspects of recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. Addressing ministers at a virtual meeting on sustainable recovery from COVID-19, Guterres said that the world is confronting two urgent crises, COVID-19 and climate change. In parallel, an online portal that showcases climate and environment policies and actions in recovery from COVID-19 was launched. The platform for a redesign 2020 will help build momentum for COP26, the UN conference that assesses progress in dealing with climate change, to be held in 2021. The Secretary General outlined six climate positive actions for a sustainable recovery, including investing in green jobs, not building out polluting industries, ending fossil fuel subsidies, accounting for climate risk in all financial and policy decisions, working together, and most importantly, leaving no one behind. Guterres spoke of governments and businesses shifting toward them, realizing that clean energy brings more jobs, cleaner air, better health, and stronger economic growth. The UN chief also called on all countries, especially members of the G20, the group of top industrialized nations, to commit to carbon neutrally before 2050. The European Union's top diplomat called on Thursday for Washington to reverse its sanctions on International Criminal Court Prosecutor Fatoy Bansoura and another member of the ICC, calling the measures, quote, unacceptable and unprecedented, end quote. The United States blacklisted Bansoura on Wednesday over her investigation into whether American forces committed war crimes in Afghanistan under sanctions authorized by President Donald Trump in June that allow for assets freezes and travel bans. Joseph Borrell, the EU High Representative for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy, said in a statement, the sanctions are quote, unprecedented measures that attempt to obstruct the court's investigations and judicial proceedings, end quote. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres on Wednesday also noted with concern on the imposition. On behalf of the UN chief, spokesperson Stefan Dujarak said, quote, we continue to closely follow developments on this matter, end quote. Reacting to the decision, the ICC on Wednesday said moves by the United States government to place sanctions on its prosecutor were an attack on international justice and the rule of law. The world's permanent war crimes court said in a statement, the sanctions are, quote, unprecedented and constitute serious attacks against the court. The Rome statute system of international criminal justice and the rule of law more generally, end quote. Egyptian Foreign Minister Samek Shokri on Thursday called on the international community to show seriousness and exert more efforts for pushing the peace process in Libya. In a press conference with the visiting European Union High Representative for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy, Joseph Borrell, Shokri said that, quote, consultations continue with European partners to maintain the sovereignty of the war-torn country and to boost the rights of the Libyan people in facing terrorism, military and foreign interventions, 
end quote. He highlighted the fixed Egyptian vision that supports reaching a consensus political solution among the Libyan conflicted parties and stressed Egypt's keenness to continue coordination with the EU partners to finalize a political solution. Shakri said that Egypt backs reaching such a solution that preserves the unity and territorial integrity of Libya and restores the role of state institutions, hailing the efforts at the economic level that aim to better manage and distribute wealth in a fair manner. That's all with the news and reports on Myanmar today. Hope everyone is staying safe.